I live in the warm south, so if I if my speech is not too long, you must forgive me. I, I'm not used to this cold. But anyway, <laughs> I just want to say a few. Uh, mention something that um, I saw on television just about a week ago, I think, on CBS, 60 Minutes. Some of you might have seen it. It was about China's housing bubble. The enormous real estate crisis that is now, you know, hitting China. In China, they've been building enormous apartment buildings, thousands and thousands of them. Entire cities, they're building nearly 15 to 20 cities every year, which are completely empty because there's no one buying them. The government spends money just to keep the economy going. Money is being pumped into these so-called infrastructure constructions. And the, one of the biggest, they said, probably in the history of human economics, this is going to be the biggest housing bubble. Everyone is nervous. They even interviewed, uh, CBS interviewed uh, the biggest uh, builder in China, the housing magnet. Very impressive looking businessman. He doesn't even remember how many cities he's built now. And they asked him, what do you think? What do you feel about the situation? He said, I'm very nervous. They said, will it burst? He said, most probably. They said, if the housing bubble bursts, if there is this huge crisis in China, what is going to happen? They asked him. And you know what he said? And this is someone who's actually got his money invested in all this. He said, then it's all going to finish. We are going to have the Arab Spring. He spoke English, he said the Arab Spring. Like what's happening all over the Middle East. And I think you must remember, Ivan, the single event that precipitated, that ignited this Arab Spring was the self-immolation of one Tunisian street vendor, someone called Mohammed Bouazizi who set himself on fire to protest against the repression of the Tunisian government and the Tunisian police. And that single event changed the whole of the Middle East. What you have in Libya, what's going on in Syria now, the fall of the dictators in Egypt. And in Tibet, we have 107 self-immolations. This is what is going to ignite the China Spring, the Tibet Spring. So all us Tibetans who have been commemorating the 10th March for all these many years, the Tibetan struggle is one of the longest freedom struggles that are going on in the world since the end of World War II. Our day is coming. When we gather here, we do it out of a sense of duty and obligation. It is not a pleasure for us. So this day, the gathering of Tibetans for 10th March should end. And it will end soon. We will be in Lhasa. We won't have any more 10th March celebrations. We will be meeting there with our Tibetan brothers and compatriots and celebrating. Our country will be free. Even China's economy is just now very impressive. Everyone in the world kowtows to it. But that will end too. We Tibetans, as Buddhists, believe that all phenomenon in this world is impermanent. Mitakpa. So China's power, China's repression is also impermanent. It belongs to this sphere of human existence. So I think we should bear this in mind. What we do here, all the sacrifices made by the Tibetans inside Tibet, not only the 107 self immolators but all those people who fought for Tibet. From 1949 in Amdo, in Nangra and Hormukha, tens of thousands of people who rose up against the communist army in eastern Tibet and come from 1956 in Litang, who defended the great monastery of Lithang 
against the communists. The many hundreds of thousands of people who died there, all over eastern Tibet. Then later in Lhasa in 1959, the old Tibetan government soldiers, policemen, the Tibetan public in Lhasa, who fought for the Tibet, Tibetan cause, who defended the Dalai Lama, who gave us the opportunity to escape from Tibet. All those people who died, we will remember them in the future in Tibet. Not in sorrow, not in anger, not in protest as we do now, but with happiness. All of us drinking our bowl of chang with our friends in Hasa, toasting each other, toasting the memories of our brave friends, compatriots, and warrior heroes of Tibet who died. That day is going to come. We can see it in this world. It is changing. So this, what we do today is not just a ritual. We are now arriving at that point in history when the real change is going to be made, which is going to happen in, in Tibet and in China. Tibetan independence means even freedom for the Chinese people. And this is something we have to bear in mind. Here's our, I just want to conclude with a few words in Tibetan. And the Tibetan youth groups, ซุมจิเตชินซุมเตกาเทวะชิวิชเทยงุตมาญิวยอร์กซันเดนาลเกมเบชชอเทเรคอมมูนิตี้ชันดามงุยอร์เบบะเลตะชิราเชดเนยอ
Ata di Times Square na mi tega TV chamo de bitwa. Di na da Dalai Lama is returning to Tibet. He is arriving in Lhasa here in Times Square TV now. We all look up and there is his holiness, wa. Okay, a little older that all the table is chat. Uta kabris. Kurdish nam je ene mat. Nam tu kanza de nam do pham de. Hese me ma ka ko wa. Te kabris shi bitwa ya chi nyama chi. Then they younger, right? And when I'm the young, the reality is which country seven and one it one run in that house on the catch a man that Melam Cambodia, one run on the Dimikman and Angores, and the combat in this shape, Gardiata, Simshudi, Macharana, tending on the papa, they are younger, not tending on the Pindas Triach, Yamaja, tending you with Prima, Yarum Chipatriach. And the dentist who had in your much younger. And the two power and Jayo, you need to just down to test the lesson. Tochana, run